what did they say? You know, um, for the blues, you needed three chords and the truth. I think you know it's like that. I suppose you learn a few chords, and you can, you, and you've got a foundation, and there's always something to go back to if, if you're going nowhere with it. That's the beauty of painting. I, I suppose, unlike conceptual art, where there's no concrete platform or there's no foundation. I, I always felt that I could go back to, I don't know, I liked life drawing, you can always, and drawing is without a doubt, that's the key for me, you know, to draw and look at something and perceive it in a way and relay it is, and it all comes back to drawing. Sculpture comes from drawing and, and the painting comes from drawing and it's all about drawing. I was accepted into the VCA and I was, um, you know, I felt very honoured, I suppose. Because they, they didn't, you know, it was called the gallery school then and uh, they d only took a few students. I, I kind of, I thought art school was good in the respect that you'd get to meet other students and, um, you know, you'd meet, I met a lot of painters there and... Uh, and I knew other people who hadn't been to art school and they sort of said it's, you know, there's no point. But um, it, was, it was incisive to go there because you knew how it operated and you knew what maybe you weren't missing out on or you were missing out on if you hadn't have gone. And I think the ones who didn't go kind of regretted it in a way. And um, in the second year of art school, I was looking for a bigger place to work and I'd, uh, I'd made friends with a few artists. And we established Raw Studios pretty much. It started as an old boot factory and um, turned into studios, but it was sort of too good for studios and it turned into a gallery, which was terrific because you could sort of put your work up and, um, you know, you're already exhibiting your work. You know, there was an, uh, a group of artists, I think they were called Store 5 or something like that, and they were doing um, very hard edge of abstract paintings, but you know, a lot of those uh, exhibitions would come with a catalogue, and the catalogue would explain what they were trying to do, and you'd have to read this kind of universe of discourse that didn't, you know, it was all esoteric. It didn't make a lot of sense unless you. And I remember the art magazines at the time, a lot of the um, critique would go on about something, and then it would say, refer to. Um, the previous art magazine to find out, you know, so they would go, well, this is infuriating, you know, whereas uh, I think, that, and most definitely I'm, um, you know, kind of reassured that we made the right decision of our painting and, and they're the paintings I love. I might go to the um, Metropolitan Museum in New York and there's a room full of um, Cezanne paintings that, is totally outstanding and there's, I mean, it's really, it's absolutely beautiful and the paintings through history that I like are all, you know, they're painted. I love Manet and he's one of the great painters, I think, and, you know, he's kind of a sword fighter in that way and um, that, to me, that's what it's about and it's about, you know, your perception of the world and whatever it might be and then to kind of put it and make it concrete, the thoughts or the feelings that you have, and to make it in paint is, a, you know, that's the quest, I think. You know, and I suppose you develop whatever it is within you, your individuality that um, comes straight out in in the line or in the in the way you work. And, and I think that is, you know, that it's something to... Well, that's what I certainly admire in uh, in other artists and, you know, the pursuit of this thing. And, I mean, people's handwriting is very distinctive and you can, you know, I mean, you can tell immediately. And in a funny way, all their little foibles and their, their quirks and their mannerisms are all portrayed in this and, in a way, the, the visual language 
of painting is like that and it's you know and it's that's the beauty of it i think when the individualistic bits come out and whatever you've gone through to get to whatever it is the trials and the the torture and and you know painting it, it, you've got to make it look effortless in a way it's got to look as though it, it just arrived from the heavens or a songwriters talk about that they say they wrote a song in you know, just as long as it took to write it down and where did it come from? They don't know. And and um, sometimes it happens like that, but it's rare and usually you work on it and you work tirelessly to make it look effortless, but it's not, you know. I suppose they say it's like dreaming where whatever's happened to you in the day is kind of condensed or it's sort of put in different form in the dream so you can make sense of the crazy world we live in. And um, drawing's a bit like that, I think, and it's sort of putting things together or... And, it, you know, you can go anywhere with it. It's not... There's no constraints. And, I mean, everything... You know, your car comes from a drawing, the building comes from a drawing, the opera house was a little squiggle on the a napkin, you know, it's all drawing and... Um, I, there was a nice documentary on Frank Geary and he said when he was an architect they'd, they were doing AutoCAD or everything was on the computer and he started hanging around with artists because they were drawing again and, you know, this, the essence of the creation is in the fundament of drawing. Botanicus Fantasticus. Um, it sort of originated, I was, I didn't have a studio in Melbourne and I was going into the Botanic Gardens and um, I'd sit there and paint pretty much. And I found it quite ironic that everyone goes to the Botanic Gardens but they just run around it. No one goes in it <laughs> and it's empty in there. And I thought, how privileged am I? I'm right in the middle of this place and I can go everywhere here and use it as a studio. And then the paintings sort of came out of that. The original ones were, um, um, they were kind of informed by everything in there, but th then I um, started turning them into figures and things like that. Maybe a little bit surreal, but I was also thinking of that 16th century painter, Archimboldo, and he did those weird heads made of fruit and things like that. And um, not, I didn't really look at it, I just remembered seeing these things. And um, years ago I made all these sculptures out of fruit and vegetables that were stuck together to make figures. And I suppose the idea, it was kind of, it was sort of already there. And it, you know, sometimes, I don't know, there's an old saying that the fruit takes a long time to grow and it drops suddenly. So that's what happened, I just went for it and um, a, had a show here at the Fox Gallery and um, that was it. <laughs>